Health, Home, and Lifestyle. Presented by Paradise Fitness Center, changing lives since 1996. Welcome back to the show, everybody. A new friend from the University of Guam joins me now in our Harmon Studios. Dr. Peter Hauk is a professor of, must be generic, Pete, science. Oh, science. Don't, don't want to limit is. you to a particular discipline because science is all encompassing. What and, a compliment. And when we talk, <laughs> we're talking about Science Sunday, a series at UOG and everything. And, and true to the theme, science happens everywhere, every day. Absolutely. And I believe that if you take time to step back and appreciate it, your life is enriched. Very cool. Now, some of the religious types might say, you know, Sunday's reserved not for science, but, for, but you know, we're not going to get in the middle of that argument. That's, that's another time, another show. Certainly not. But, but one thing that you're, you're concentrating on more recently for Science Sundays is fisheries topics, which is very, very popular here given our climate, given our geolocation, and given our culture's connection to the ocean. Absolutely, yeah. Um, just first to clarify, but the, the Science Sunday is run by uh, NOAA. It's a, it's, a, it's a federal local management agency kind of interacting. Hmm. Uh, I just happen to be the guest speaker this coming week on Sunday, uh, and the topic happens to be coastal fisheries of Guam uh, and how they've evolved uh, since, say, the mid-80s until about the mid-2000s. We have a nice data set in partnership with the Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources and so many fishermen over the years who have been interviewed and provided their data so we have some really cool uh, insight coming on that can hopefully help us to a better future. Now, unfortunately, I did not bring my laptop here mm. so we can crunch the numbers and everything. But, but generically speaking and everything like that, probably the, the one thing that most people will want to know is, has the amount of fish that's been harvested from the ocean, has it increased, has it decreased? And what are some of the, like, the major themes that, that we as just Joe Average citizens should be concerned about? Yeah, I think if you ask the average fisherman or if, if you ask the average scientist who's looked at a particular data set, they're going to tell you there's been a decrease over time. But when you really crunch through and dig through the numbers, you'll see that it really gets down to the way in which the data were collected. It's impossible to get a perfect snapshot of every fish that comes off the reef every year, nor can you interview every single fisherman and get their catch records. So we have to do data inferences. We have to get as best that we can in there. So we can look at things like the mean size of certain species of parrotfish through time. We can look at the percent contribution of Napoleon Rass, a nice, large, iconic fish that people think about through time. So there are other ways that we can infer an answer to your question, but we might not have an absolute answer. Mm. Um, in terms of species, since you were just mentioning diff different types of fish, um, is there a variance in that, in that window that you're analyzing and everything between the 80s and now and everything in terms of what fish were popular back then uh, as opposed to what is right now and, and maybe geographically like what what fish being caught on the western side of the island differs from down south or on the eastern side of the island near you at UOG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say uh, the biggest feature that we saw in the data set was uh, when Agate Marina opened up in about 1995, mm -hmm. I believe it was, or somewhere near there. Uh, we all of a sudden started seeing fish coming in from the uh, south side. So, so as, as, and I think that really helped because some of the stocks, as we see in our data set, were starting to slowly become depleted from the northwest side of the island, where a lot of fishing was done initially, especially, com especially commercial fishing. And so we see that when that opened up, uh, things were kind of uh, uh, brought back to life for a little while. But then also there was a, still a persistent uh, decline in many of the fisheries, unfortunately, until the mid-2000s. Um, and we also see a general location shifting from the west to the east coast uh, a little bit more to, to enhance your catches. Okay, interesting. So they're actually going a little bit more closer to you, which I would say because I went to UOG in the <sighs> mid-90s. And, you know, th there was a cyclical problem that we had over there because that part of the coast um, is very well known for crown of thorns starfish. Mm. How, what impact have they had on, you know, because, because when they literally eat the reef and everything like that, how have they changed the practice of actually catching fish. Yeah, absolutely. The crown of thorn starfish, I, I think many people know this, is the infamous coral predator with thorns all over it that you don't want to touch because you could get poison. Let's call it the coral killer. Cor cor coral killer, yeah. coral killing machine. That's a scientific name. Mm, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on this. <laughs> but in the late uh, 60s and the early 70s, we saw the biggest uh, outbreak of these. And then uh, we see cyclical outbreaks, not nearly the magnitude that we saw back then, but still persistent. And we seem to have some persistent ones, uh, not just on the East Coast, but uh, all around Guam. And mm -hmm. it's done quite a, quite a damage over the years. And you compile that with, say, coral bleaching. Now, this, uh, with, the, with the ocean getting warmer, we have mm -hmm. episodic coral bleaching events. So we really have to be careful and manage our, our local stressors. That's how much fish we take off the reef, how much pollution we put to the reef, because we need our reef to be super healthy. So if you're a person, you might say, oh, I got really sick and, and I died because I got a bad flu. But if you 
if you really dig in deeper, maybe you were smoking a pack of cigarettes a day and had an unhealthy diet, and then you got the flu and then passed away. Mm -hmm. But if you think about these local stressors and managing these local stressors, we're not gonna beat the global stressors. We're not gonna beat climate change. Guam's not going to, but, but of course nations together can. But Guam can prolong the impacts by managing local stressors. This is the key. Okay, well, that's another perfect segue that you gave, um, ever the scientist, mm -hmm. um, because <laughs> most people would say, okay, it's data gathering, data analysis, and then what do we do with this? Like mm. in terms of implementation, where are we going and everything? A lot of people bring up sustainability. Can we continue to catch fish at this level? Are we over commercializing fishing and you know, are we actually damaging you know, the ecosystem? And given where we are literally on an island and everything, what should we be concerned about? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, the biggest issue is with coastal fisheries. And we want to distinguish coastal fisheries from pelagic fisheries. So pelagic fisheries, things like mahi, wahu, a bonita, those kinds of tuna that you catch when you go hand lining offshore. More of a Pacific wide stock, not completely, but more so of a Pacific wide stock, harder to deplete, faster growing. When we think about reef species, some of these can live 10, 20, even 30 years old. And so if we keep on harvesting the way we have into the future, yeah, we can uh, c continue ex to expect the trends that we have started to see already, which, which unfortunately are not all very good. Okay, and is this data set that you'll be presenting, is it a completed data set like to now has it been like finalized and polished and everything and is it publicly available because i'm thinking you know mm, there are a lot of da data science sites out there services like kaggle and everything like that where you can actually get stuff there's not that many data sets mm. that have that are pertinent to guam so you put this out there it'd take programmers like me and everything we go nuts with this yeah thing. that you know I, I think that's awesome and that's one of the uh, goals of our project was for, for both guam and for cnmi we're doing this also at cnmi we're talking about guam here uh, is to make sure all the data that are collected are available so it's really our partners who have just been amazing over the years, that's DAWR, Aquatic and Wildlife Resources, uh, in collecting that data and make it available to people upon request. Mm -hmm. And so all of that data is available. Um, there is more modern data, uh, which hasn't quite come online yet, but it might come online. So our analysis stops in the mid 2000s. The obvious next question after, uh, if you would attend the Science Sunday talk on Sunday, mm -hmm. would be, well, what happened in the past decade until 2016? Okay. Right? Okay, well, we'll let you have the last mm -hmm. word. Uh, where can people know, because this is, but a pittance of what you are going to talk about and everything like that. We a drop in the bucket, if you will. So how can people attend your talk? All right. Well, first, thank you so much for uh, giving us a chance to put a plug in for this. Uh, on Sunday at the, um, uh, near the gate to the, to the Navy base, uh, right, the uh, museum over there, uh, we have, they're hosting a Science Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, that's where people can go and learn more and we'll have a talk there. But also they can contact the University of Guam Marine Lab We'll be happy to do a presentation for you or your group at any point in time or put you on an email list to receive uh, both outreach materials and uh, scientific nerdy, if you will, detailed documentations of the results. Got to love that. Thank you for sharing the science. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Pete. All right. That is at the t Newman Center. That is down in Sumai. Check it out. Sunday at 10. We are back right after this.